What's going on guys? Welcome back to this video. Today's video will be on Hack the Box platform. And if you remember, we started Intro to Binary Exploitation two weeks ago. And that's our progress now. Now, today we're going to do Reg. And as you can see in the Reg challenge, we're going to have to start the instance. To, because later on, we're going to interact with the machine remotely and you're gonna have to download the attached files which contains the binary so if you switch to my machine here i have the uh, required files ready so if i ls so as you can see i have the binary if i issue file reg we can take a look at the executable information most notably we can see that it is 64 bit and it is not stripped so reminding you guys not stripped binary it means that debugging information are not removed which means the main function and other functions can be uh, displayed right from any debugger okay all right so this time we're gonna do this challenge a bit differently we're not gonna use gdp directly we're gonna first use radar 2 to reverse engineer the binary so we're gonna start with the radar 2 reg okay and the first thing we want to do is to start the analysis. So we're going to do that with three A's. So we have analyze. You can also use AFL to display the functions. So beside the main function, let's see what do we have. So we have printf, we have gets, we have put, and we have winner, and we have f open and f gets. Okay, so these functions can also be viewed using Ghidra. We have done quite a good number of videos on how to reverse engineer a binary with Gitra. So today we're going to do is uh, Radar2. So as you can see guys, we have gets, we have put, main, most probably open and f open and f gets are to open the flag or retrieve the flag file. But we're not sure yet. Let's run the binary and interact with it. So reg. So first it takes the user input. So you're gonna enter my name and it says registered. Great. How about we generate some unexpected pattern? So uh, we could say print or we can say uh, yeah print. And here we say two A's. Let's say times one hundred. Now oh, we can have to enter Python, Python 3, and then we print this pattern. All right, so how about we take this and we supply it to the file. See if we can hit a segmentation fault. So reg. And we got a segmentation fault. So it means that the binary is vulnerable to buffer overflow. Let's go back. So this is the main assembly. Uh, this is these are the main functions. Okay. Now we can also get the strings using IZ. So IZ displays the strings. As you can see, we have congratulations, flag, enter your name, registered. So far, so forth. We have seen these two strings, but we haven't yet been able to seeing the uh, see congratulations and the flag we can also get the entry of the main function using ie or the entry point these are the entry points these addresses may be important later and we can use im to get the main function address using radar 2 all right let's go back now and take a look at these functions. So let's take a look at the winner function. It looks interesting. So we can say s sim.winner and then we say pdf. Take a look at the disassembly of this function. So that is the disassembly of the function. As you can see guys, it is really indeed um, opening a file named flag.text to open the uh, flag that we need to retrieve. 
So basically, that's the that's the function that we need to target. Now we we not we're not sure yet if this function is called in the in the main function. So we're gonna have to do we're gonna have to switch to the visual representation. And um, here we can see here this is the visual representation of the winner. Okay, we're gonna use Q to quit. Okay, uh, sorry, I quit entirely from the wait out. Let's go back and use V uppercase to for a visual representation of the binary. So we can use uh, the upper, the page up or page down, or we can use the arrow keys to switch, as you can see here. We can go up and down with the arrow keys, and we can use lowercase v to switch between functions, variables, so on and so forth. You can use q to go back or to entirely quit. So as you can see, I'm using now the arrow keys. I can use page down or page up. So s sim dot main and bdf. Now this is the assembly of this assembly of the main function. As you can see, there is only one call to a function named run. Now let's take a look at run. That is the disassembly of run. So it calls initialize. It calls printf, most probably to retrieve the user input using gets, right? So using gets in any C code makes your code vulnerable to buffer overflows. Remember that we were able to overflow the input with uh, 100 uh, A's. So that's the first thing to spot or to note about this file, about this binary. And then we have put, right? So as you can see guys, in the in the main assembly, in the main function, there's only one function called run. And in the run itself, we have only three calls to retrieve the user input and display registered back to the terminal. So there is no call to the function winner that we spotted earlier. So let's take a look at the winner function ourselves. So s sim dot winner and a bdf. So this is the winner function, and this is the function that we want to target. Okay. Now, the fact that the uh, the binary is vulnerable to buffer overflow will help us tremendously in reaching or redirecting the execution flow of the binary to execute the winner function or to perform a call on the winner function remember in buffer overflow guys our objective is to control the ex execution or the execution flow of the binary so that we make the instruction pointer pointing at the return address the return address will be uh, overflow with the uh, uh, shell code now whether the binary is susceptible to shellcode execution uh, can be f actually uh, spotted using checksec. So let's exit and use checksec on rec. So as you can see, we have NX enabled, which means we cannot use an actual shellcode uh, on the return address because the stack is not executable. Now, usually there are specific ways or specific methods to uh, exploit a binary vulnerable to buffer overflow where the NX is enabled. Uh, so luckily for us, in this scenario, we're going to only need to access the winner function. So instead of redirecting the execution flow to point to return address, instead we're going to redirect the execution flow to reach the winner function. How we're gonna do that, we need to generate a number of bytes that is enough to cause a segmentation fault. And right after that offset, we're gonna need to redirect execution flow to this function. For that, we're gonna need to find the address of this function, uh, which happens to be the winner. Okay, so let's do that, guys. So basically, 
let's use radar to back we want to find the address of the winner function afl so this displays the functions and we have the winner this is the memory address of the winner function okay now having the um, uh, address next we need to generate a pattern now exactly how many offsets we need we're gonna need now to jump to gdb debugger so you can exit clear and gdb rec okay pattern create let's say 100 and we're gonna take the 100 and hit the binary with these bytes so pattern or let's say run paste we hit a segmentation fold and let's take a look at the stack pointer and the base pointer the methodology is the same all the time so this is the stack pointer and as you can see it is filled with some of the characters uh, we use in the pattern and we have the base pointer now next step is to find the offset so finding the offset is easy guys let's take the first three bytes from here and use pattern search So as you can see, it points to 56. Alternatively, you can find the offset using characters from the stack pointer. So let's take these three. But the command will be different. Pattern offset. And it's at offset 56. So it's the same as uh, the, 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 the previous one using pattern search. So now 56 bytes. So what we're going to do, we're going to generate only 56 bytes. Okay. And then we add the address of the winner function. So what happens here, after 56 bytes, uh, we will be able to reach the instruction pointer. Now, whatever we put in the instruction pointer will actually control the execution flow of the program. We're going to put the address of the winner function so that the instruction pointer points to the address of the winner function, thus executing it. So it's very easy to do that. We're gonna exit, clear, and then we're gonna show you the exploit, guys. So it's cat exploit py. It's very easy. So we just generated 56 bytes, and we use the address of the winner function I showed you earlier with the decode command because it needs to be a string, and then we print the payload. So executing this exploit will print us the payload. That's the payload we need to use. All right, we're going to pipe this payload. All right, no problem. Python exploit. And then we're going to pipe this to uh, the current connection parameters we have. This will send the output as an input to the program running on the server. So doing that will display the flag. Simply what happened here we were able to execute the winner function, which opened the flag in the flag file and displayed it back to the terminal. So that was it, guys. I hope you enjoyed that, and I'm going to see you in the next video.